Hello? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. <laughs> I'm not sure if actually the audience can hear me. Do you hear me at least? Or nobody can hear us both? Hello. Yeah, it's only me. All right, can you guys hear me now? Yes, we do. All right, well, I'm gonna start the show. I'll, I'll upload this um, anyway, so that first uh, 10 minutes. <laughs> I was learning how to, to read your history. <laughs> I guess that's what everybody else was doing. Hi, hi everyone, ciao. Hi. Hi. Well, I'm glad I didn't go the whole show with nobody being able to hear me. I didn't keep blabbing. So I'll, I'll go back. So basically I was sharing about our conference and those of you that can read lips, you got it. But, um, and I, and I can't even, they usually do like, uh, the words at the bottom, but that won't even happen because the computer couldn't even hear me. So gotta love technology. So hello everybody. I'm Jenny. Um, welcome. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. I'm not going to go back and share all that other stuff I just did, but, um, I have Sonia here. So Sonia, go ahead and introduce yourself. Oh, wait I'm a second. Kidding. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I was like, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, mm. hi, everyone. Thank yeah. you for joining. It's my pleasure. My name is Sanya Radovanovic, and I am a professional home staging master and the president of the International Home Staging Associations Europe. I do live and work in Rome. Um, where I'm also covering the role of the first creative director for a real estate agency who finally they're getting to, to use our services has actually included home staging and they offer it as part of their marketing package to every single listing. So, um, you're exciting. It is. And, and I also feel that this somehow gives a little bit of hope to all those who are somehow struggling a bit because of COVID. And as you know very well, Europe is far behind. I know we're celebrating this year 50 years of home staging, but um, we're quite behind. Yes, yes. And I know so we'll talk about all the good things. Let's, I, let's yeah. give a plug for the conference because I started to talk about that. So we are going to Portugal and I'm going to put up the um, this image. That is um, the grounds of the Pistana Palace Hotel in Portugal, where the um, the conference is being hosted. Very exciting, um, beautiful, Very beautiful. <laughs> yeah, beautiful location. And I had your theme. Let me try to find all this here. Let me let me pull that up. So talk I, about the conference. So it's coming up May twenty eighth and 29th. In May twenty eighth, yeah, twenty ninth. Um, the theme of the conference is the future is now. Now it's the right time to do the right things and everything else that we've been postponing for almost two years, um, not only in our professional, but also in private life. Yes. We all tend to say, oh, I'll do this thing tomorrow or next week or next month. So business related or um, private wise, anything that has to do with you, this is the right time. So Pistana Palace, as you've shown, beautiful um, historical location. The conference is going to be a two-day conference where the second day is um, optional. Uh, we are going to have you, Jenny Norris, as the certified trainer for the staging senior staging specialist designation. And the um, first day is going to be filled with great speakers. Uh, we're going to also have an exciting international real estate panel. So we're going to focus also on the real estate aspects and what is happening worldwide. Um, and we know very well, not everybody does though, that home staging is 100% related to the real estate industry. So having um, at our international panel, representatives from uh, FIAPSI or SEPI, FIAPSI Worldwide, which is the Federation of the 
international real estate agents. CEPI stands for European Association of Real Estate Professionals and many other dignitaries. It's, it's really important so that they see and witness firsthand that when we say home staging, we mean actually an industry of professionals who are offering valuable services and they make a ton of money because of us. Yeah, and I'm I'm really excited. So I'm throwing up pictures of the hotel. It's just gorgeous. And then they, they had the gala dinner, which is a black tie event. Yeah. Um, so that'll be really fun. That's going to be on the, the, is that the first night? That's Friday night? Yeah, that's Friday night. The first night um, we'll be having also the awards after the gala dinner and the awards, we're going to go and have a party. And you know how much we like to party in Europe. You remember from back in 2018? <laughs> I mean, you guys, we did conga lines. I mean, it was, I mean, it, it was really fun. So they, they are, um, they love to celebrate and we have a lot to celebrate um, this, this conference because we have been apart and it has been, um, it's been too long. And so being able just to see each other, I, um, I, you know, did you read my article that I sent you? Yes. Yeah. And I love so, that. I just want to give you a hug. I know. So I said in there, you know, what am I looking? She asked one of the questions. So she has a, a, an article she does where the president speaks to certain people. And so uh, one of the questions she asked me to um, answer was, what am I looking forward to for the conference? And I said, well, the first thing is every single person who comes in, there's going to get a hug. And I don't care if they're not a hugger, they're going to get a hug because I, uh, that human connection we need. And I just have missed that. And so um, I'm really looking forward to seeing all the colleagues and I, and those of us in the U S that are able to get over there, let's go support our, our colleagues over in Europe. You know, it's a business write-off because it's a trip, um, that's about staging and so forth. And you get to go to one of the most beautiful places in the world. I think, you know, it's a beautiful city, Lisbon. Um, you know, I've never been there and I'm, I'm, I'm just really excited. You guys pick such a beautiful location. Yeah, it really, um, is also from from you know as stagers we need to be surrounded by you know beauty and the architectural aspects everything that we do talks about us no so i'm i'm also um, not 100 percent sure but almost there that 28th and 29th is your long is that memorial weekend yeah it's memorial day so that should be also a long weekend a great yeah and, and what i think what I recommend for people traveling in from the United States, mm -hmm. go in early. Um, the jet lag, I, we usually fly overnight, so we sleep, but you land and it's like your, your body clock is off. So when I went in for Vienna, I stayed up and John slept. And then I was like, it, it was, it's like you feel like you're kind of a zombie walking around, but trying to get that body clock in sync is important. So we'll come in a couple of days early just to acclimate. And then, I, you know, we plan on staying afterwards too to see Portugal and yeah. maybe go other places. So it's a wonderful opportunity to travel and um, but mostly to come and learn and support the colleagues there. So I'm going to put up the speakers here in just a second. You can tell us what sure. their topics are. I just want to try. Also, um, it's all okay. about getting together, learning, growing, networking, having fun, everything that we have missed, everything that we need. So this is Marta Monteiro. Uh, Marta comes from Portugal. She works for the company who's called, which is called Points of View. For those who are not familiar, uh, the Points of View tools were um, designed to be used by professionals, by individuals, and most of all, by organizations. So it is um, a powerful and a unique way that they invite us to get uh, free of thought patterns and obvious solutions, as well as finding ourselves and opening to all those new possibilities in terms of expansion of our mindset of the growth both personally and professionally so it's it's a game and it's based on photography and works with cards cards that um they're actually photos and they do have uh, words and they come with powerful questions that sounds, that sounds really cool. So she's one of the speakers and, I, and yeah. all the speakers, by the way, are going to be on Saturday. And then on Sunday is the half day that I'll be teaching the senior designation. And then here's um, another speaker. We all, hopefully a lot of us recognize this lovely face. Yeah. Lovely Birgit Anich, who's also a colleague. Birgit will teach us about managing our warehouses and logistics. So anything that has to do with tips and tricks of how to maximize 
the, mm, the operational efficiency that is involved within our businesses. And as I said, we're, we are behind. So we needed industry leaders to show us how to run businesses in a more effective way. Not many home staging professionals do own their own, uh, their warehouse. So for those who are starting right now, or for those who are growing up their business, knowing and learning from the best in the industry, I think it's, it's really, it's really important. It is. And so, um, and, and even though they don't have, you know, Europe is very different because it's very densely populated. So you don't have these massive warehouses in the cities and um, logistics wise, even getting furniture in these older buildings in Italy, you've told me, cause you have a warehouse, you started the first one in Italy um, in Rome and you know, they don't have elevators. And so you have to carry furniture up multiple flights of stairs. And so the logistics side is very challenging. However, as, as the industry evolves and people become more aware, I see that more people will be able to have spaces where they can house things. And then it is the efficiency that's really important. So well, here's Barb. Yeah, we do yeah. have stay. I mean, we do have elevators, but they're tiny. Well, but a lot of the older buildings <laughs> don't, though, right? Yeah. Not every building has an elevator. Those who do, um, think about they're really, really tiny. You can fit up to three, four people, maximum eight, within, of course, the residential properties. So it's uh, tough luck. You gotta bring up to the third, fifth floor the sofas, anything that it's um, unfortunately that can cannot fit within the elevator itself. So logistic wise, it's it's pretty different, challenging. We, we have that here, like there's some older condos here. Um, it says one of them is like a 55 and older mm -hmm. and they had the tiniest little elevator. We can't even get a couch in there. And so uh, we've had to climb up the stairs and so you just add more time, but it's, you know, I always feel bad for the guys. I used to carry this stuff and now I just tell them what to bring. <laughs> but anyway, um, tell us what Barb is speaking about. So Barbara Hilsonic, another industry professional, great colleague and friend, she's flying to Lisbon to speak about how uh, first impression matters. You no know, staging designs that um, that inspire, and she will also share um, top ten secrets on how to make your company stand out from from the competition. Awesome. And she's um, she's from Germany, so I'm I'm really excited because and Birgit is also so they're. Um, Where's Birgit from originally? Is she uh, in Austria. Austria, okay. So Austria and Germany. So we've got, you know, the international, but they have businesses here in the US, but it's awesome that people who have a connection over in Europe are, are um, speaking and also supporting our colleagues. And yeah. you know, it's awesome. So here's Annie. This is Annie and Annie's based in UK. So Barbara has, um, her, her origins are from Germany. Um, Annie is from the UK and she's an international award winning stager and designer. And she's going to take us on a um, visual journey while we will be exploring the, um, the design principles that not only enhance the staging projects, but they will also increase um, the, the, our confidence in dealing with, uh, with our clients. Yeah, All those principles. What a great, yeah, great topic. Um, let's see here. Here's June. And then we're going to have June Carter. I heard June speak at, was it the conference in Miami or in 2019 when we went to oh, Fort we Lauderdale? That's 2017 Fort Lauderdale, but she was, okay. I don't think she was on, she wasn't there yet. So she was, you probably saw her in Charlotte or Nashville. Charlotte. Yeah. And that was one of my biggest aha moments. Her time management really did save me for this past four years or three. Um, it was incredibly helpful. And to know that she's going to fly to, to Lisbon and to support us and speak about how to improve the efficiency and free up the time and create environment that will actually support us, not only stress us, but it will support and this is because we do manage and, and we run, you know, crazy busy lives. And it is challenging to to combine everything, being a mother, a wife, uh, having kids and um, for those who run multiple businesses and also for those who are fathers, not mothers. <laughs> I bet it's challenging, too. So um, it's all about how to improve 
and manage the time that we do have wisely and efficiently. And I love June. So she's one of our um, course trainers. She's from Florida, amazing person. Um, and, you know, time management is, is critical. So I'm really looking forward to hearing what she has yeah. to say. It's kind of fun because hosting the conference and you know that I'll be there, you know, doing whatever yeah. you need me to do, computers, whatever. Um, it's, it's different. It's kind of fun being able to go and actually sit and listen versus being the one running everything because I don't get to often see all the speakers. So it, it'll be a different experience even for myself. And we all need to continue learning. And in fact, I put a staging thing together on that, that, you know, education keeps us um, fresh and on top of things. And if ego and pride keep people from getting education, being like, I don't need to do that, then you're you're missing out on something that you really need to learn. And when we stop learning, I just feel like our our inner self just sort of dies. You have to continue to learn and be on top of things. So um, here is this lovely lady here. This is Mariah. Um, we all use social media networks, okay? And we're more active uh, on Instagram and Facebook. And this is also um, when it comes to the cultural differences that we have, and also because of demographics. So like, I'm a boomer. I mean, actually I'm not, but that's my mindset. And I'm always constantly thinking. You're, you're not a boomer. No, I'm not a boomer, but I some, sometimes I do act like one. And uh, <laughs> you said you act old, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no. And I'm constantly like, setting on Facebook rather than being on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And Mariah will actually teach us how useful, important is LinkedIn. And that's the professional network. That's where mostly of, I think all of our clients are there. And that's the best way to, to get in touch with them um and how to stay you know just ahead in the home staging industry uh getting connected with the real estate agents and and having the opportunity to inform them and to educate them on um on all the opportunities that they might encounter you know with um working with a home stager so all about how to use uh in a proper way your linkedin account and i think that's important because um you're right i you know, Facebook is the generation of like, you know, um, mid forties to the older. So a lot of people are on there. Then you have the millennials that prefer Instagram. You got TikTok. It, um, LinkedIn tends to be one that, that we sort of forget about, you know, posting on, oh, you know, we have a profile. I share things on there, but learning how to really use that platform in the most effective way. Cause I get a lot, you know, when I go in there, it's like, I've got all these requests for people who want to, you know, connect with me. And a lot of them, they're just, it's for, for business purposes. It's a great way to do that, but being able to use it as a marketing platform to get business, that's also really critical. So that, that'll be a really great topic to hear. Also, to make if we compare, uh, for instance, the, um, how we behave, or at least this is how I do. Like, I don't accept every friend request on Facebook. I kind of go and dig deeper or do I even know the people who are asking me to become friends? But when it comes to LinkedIn, which is a professional platform, and I do see that, you know, they belong to the industry, it's an immediate accept. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's because it's business related. They're not going to be like, uh, you know, troll you. Hi, pretty lady. Yeah. Like the fake, you know, the fake profiles. And you're like, delete, you know. Uh, and so, you know, posting your... Um, they, you can post. The one thing I don't like is you can't post videos on LinkedIn, and I'm hoping that they can improve that. You can put videos in your profile and all your recommendations. And I don't know if she's going to speak to giving and getting recommendations. You want to have a certain number or more. And um, mine, I have a lot of them, but they're not new. So being able to keep that fresh, that'll be a really good, um, a really good topic. And just understanding because time. We're going to learn from June Carter. Time is the great equalizer. We all only have 24 hours in the day and being able to be most efficient with where we put our time for marketing purposes is really important. So let's talk about um, anything else you want to share about the conference outside of it's going to be fabulous and fun and, and informative. Um, you can see all the great speakers that they've lined up. They all have plenty of time to develop their topics. It's not just like a surface and then you have to pay money to get the rest of the information. They have plenty of time to develop their topics. Are the, are the sessions going to be recorded? They're all live. They're all live. So yeah. they'll be doing live streaming? Uh, do you have a Maybe second question? No, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. So they'll, they'll be live. Whether or not they're recorded, we don't know. Um, and so the main thing is you want to come in person 
to the conference. That's really the goal. And um, 2018 was the first time that, that IHOSPIER hosted a conference. It was the first time that all of the association leaders from around Europe met each other. And the language barriers can be challenging. And so uh, we've established English as the language for our association in Europe. But of course, there's people that speak different languages. And so the last year or so, we've been working on translating, for example, the educational courses. So we're working on Italian, Spanish, French, Portuguese, or um, and then what else? Any other languages? As of now, so no. Far? Okay, we got to get German in there. But so the goal is to be able to, if somebody wants to learn about staging, to tap in. However, let's talk about the association and um, yeah. the different things you guys are working on. Before we, we speak on that, I just wanted to to close the whole um, you know discussion in regards to to the conference. Invite everybody to to join us and don't miss this opportunity. Um, we're really working hard as um, as a European association. We just celebrated our fourth birthday at the beginning of February, but I'm so um, happy and proud of the achievements that we were able to do. As you know, our vision is to obtain the deserved credibility for home staging professionals and for the industry overall, just because we're not well known yet. And that is the main reason we're also having the international real estate panel, as I said, with representatives from different associations. And we're going to tap into, um, you know, questions like, what about the prop tech and digitalization? We also need to learn how they, they work on a daily basis. We'll speak about the post-pandemic scenario, what is going to happen to the housing market um, we will speak about equal opportunities and gender equality within the real estate. Uh, and this because most of the presidents of the real estate associations for this year are going to be led by women. Mm. Yeah. And we will also tap into sustainable investments in real estate it's a great opportunity, not only to network, have fun and be all together after a couple of years, but it's also important not to miss the educational sessions and, and what can it offer. And I think in many ways, even though you say, and we know that staging has not been around as long in Europe, the way staging's done there, you know, they have they have really had a great opportunity when it was being established to establish foundational principles and access a, a pathway for access that didn't wasn't just like a free-for-all which we sort of experienced here in the united states because there it, there wasn't any like specific guideline like you have to take this class or do these different things they worked on getting it officially approved by at the government level um, as far as you know certifications and recognition of the um, industry and i will say that the staging you know this the styles are very different and i sometimes feel like sometimes we were like this here in the united states like we were we're used to our, what we have here, we got to open our eyes and see what's going on around the world. And um, we're working on with stagers in just about every continent that are, um, you know, getting into business, have had businesses, want to get connected and so forth. So it definitely is global. And in Europe, by and large, I'd say over 90% of the stagers are architects, trained as architects or interior designers. Exactly. Or both, and that's how they find their way into staging. So they already have this higher level of education and I believe awareness of of you know properties and and um, aesthetics and so forth that isn't often found in the base education of the stager in the United States. And here's also what happens: um, people tend to see Europe as one one big continent as it is, but then without forgetting that we are like fifty countries combined for who knows how many different languages. And as you know, every language comes with its own culture and mentality. And that also reflects on home staging. You, you would see because of the cultural differences and market, market differences that certain um, you know, projects are carried out slightly different and different doesn't necessarily mean you know, worse or better, just different. So um, I'm actually really proud of what is happening in Europe. Uh, from the institutional point of view, I see that we're making a lot of improvements and 
we just need to have more volume of work and this is going to happen only by keeping and informing and educating real estate agents property developers uh, managers to investors to our yeah. services. you know and so what we'll kind of at the, on the realtor panel i hope that the question comes up of <clears throat> the way houses are listed um being able to change the way houses are listed there because we experienced that a realtor secures a listing. They're the only one marketing that property in Europe. Anybody can market the property. So really it's almost like, it's like the buyer's agent is the one that gets the commission. It's kind of, it's very different. So it, because of that, real estate agents are not necessarily motivated to pay for the staging, even a consultation because they're not guaranteed they're going to get the sale. So how is that? Is that still the way it is? Do you see, do you hear any grumblings as far as that changing? I'm seeing a lot of improvement in Italy. Of course, I can speak uh, for the Italian market with, uh, with experience and say, uh, when was the last time I was on the show in 2019? Yes, yeah, Nashville. Okay. So this is what happened for the past two years and a half. They're actually starting to secure the exclusive list. They've understood that that's the only way for them to earn a business and then earn the commission. Mm -hmm. and as you said, if should it happen that five real estate agents, okay, regardless the the franchising company they belong to or not, should they all represent the same seller? What's the point of investing in home staging? As you said, in professional photography, it's it's anybody's game. But more and more people are starting to secure the exclusive listing and also the length of the listing itself. It used mm -hmm. to be like three to six months. Now for higher end properties, they're like, okay, let's have um, a listing secured for 12 months exclusively. So yeah, everything. Good. Seems that, to be that's encouraging because that will lead to business for the stagers for sure. Um, you know, we experience in the United States and in Canada as well, and maybe other countries where it's a little bit more evolved. Um, the real estate agents bring the stager in as a way to get the listing uh, over their competition and then make sure the listing looks its best before it hits the market. So as this, as this takes hold, those that are doing it right now are sort of the pioneers in the real estate industry. Um, it's almost like what Barb was like back in 1972 when she started staging. She was staging her listings. Other people weren't. Hers looked different. She started getting busy, became a top producer. So it just builds, builds, builds. And these agents that are doing that are going to see a benefit. And the key is to get them to turn around and toot the horn and share their success. And people are going to go, why are they so successful? And I'm not. Well, because they're including this, <laughs> right? The staging that makes all the difference in the world. So that's really encouraging. Let's talk about, um, you, you know, we have this realtor panel. I'm not sure who's on it, but I know let's talk about like CEPI, for example, and uh, the other countries and leaders um, of the industry that you have been, you know, you're like a dog with a bone in a way, not in a bad way, but just very, you have to be so focused and mm -hmm. Follow up. It's been something like two to three years with some of these people to develop. It's the and the cultural thing. You know, you can't just like blast in. They're like, you need to use us. It's it's this whole step by step. So let's talk about how that has um, evolved. So um, we have re-signed for another three years uh, the exclusive agreement with SEPI, uh, so the European Real Estate Professional Association. They are like the industry umbrella, and they have. As of now, 29 national affiliate associations, okay? For a total of 350,000 members. That's huge. That's huge. And huge. being their exclusive knowledge partner for home staging gives us, offers us an, an amazing opportunity to reach out to those people, show them the benefits of staging. And this will, of course, translate into the increase of volume for work for all of us in Europe, because those 29 countries um, are almost covering two thirds of the continent. Which is excellent. And and that in turn will spill over and it's gonna, I predict that when this really takes off that it will be huge and it will definitely impact the United States too. And you know, those of you watching, it's not just like, oh, they're behind us and we're showing them what to do. There's a relationship that they established first with a luxury worldwide brand 
um, a huge opportunity for stagers and so forth that is now coming to us in the United States, but it's because of what they did in Europe and the awareness of that um, service and so forth that we have the opportunity here in the United States to, to participate as an international association of home staging professionals and provide this to our members. And so that's, I have a, actually a call today with Peter um, and then one of the sponsors for the conference in Europe. But um, so there's, you do such a great job of not just representing the association, but cultivating relationships at a very high level that a lot of other people might have been intimidated to do. Um, you are fearless in that regard. And, yeah, and, 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 and persistent and also, um, I'm trying to get the word not committed, but just like you're like, I'm going to this is going to I'm going to make this happen. Um, you're going to keep doing it because you want to win that opportunity. So um, that's yeah. really Thank wonderful. You. Thank you so much. And the, the two to one, which is the global real estate marketplace. Um, this is really something big, big worldwide. Yeah. It's like I always tell people think about your national. No uh portal or think about redfin and zillow and all those portals on a national level and then think about two to one which is going to be a worldwide and properties from dubai to canada to all the way to thailand and um even in africa not only luxury listings but you can get all sorts of um they call it accessory services you can buy a yacht They've been offering yeah, the, the opportunity to actually purchase property with Bitcoins. It's very exciting. And so, hey, Karen and Kat, and um, I saw uh, Orlando, you were on earlier. I just want to acknowledge Sarah and Susanna. Hello. And other people, sign your names because I don't, I don't see who you are. Uh, so 221, it's how we're partnering with them. It's going to be um, opportunities to educate the members that are using the platform. So they'll be taking courses on these are the real estate agents that will be understanding staging and so forth. And, um, and then the stagers being able to have profiles on this platform as part of our relationship that, um, you know, that's a huge benefit being able to have exposure to these luxury estate agents who are representing these properties all over the world. And, um, uh, you know, other, other things that we're working on with the agreement, but that just those two things alone, that's a huge, a huge opportunity. opportunity. And they came. So did you, so, and they, Peter came to me through Sonia, but how did you, did you find Peter? Or did he find you? How did you find 221? So the uh, COO of 221 found me on LinkedIn. I use LinkedIn. <laughs> See, that's great. <laughs> and as you said, everything needs time to be thought, put in place revised reviewed um these are the game changing opportunities or game changing situations that have a huge impact on both industries for home stagers and real estate agents um it took almost two years and i'm glad that they're sponsoring the conference mm -hmm. uh, we will have um quite a big representation of two to one uh, it's exciting board members directly in portugal yeah. And there's even opportunity for, I mean, so as an association member, being able to refer people into 221 that are agents, there's actually monetary benefit in doing that. So we're working on all the final plans on that, but I can't wait to be able to share that. I hope to have Peter uh, on the show. Uh, I spoke with him. He has a place. He was in Chicago when I spoke with him, but I know he's mm -hmm. got places in California and over in Europe and really interesting guy. And we, we went off totally off topic and talked about all sorts of stuff. He'd actually be, he's got some really cool cultural knowledge about the, the far East and um, how to do business there too, which that, that in and itself would be an interesting topic to have him share uh, on the show. Uh, but I'm really excited about that opportunity and strictly through IHOS we're exclusive. So no other group will have this opportunity. It's just IHOS because we are the world's largest and it all started with, with Sonia being on LinkedIn. So, you know, um, and being who you are and doing what you've been doing, which is excellent. Um, and as you said, about, really, it's about also cultivating relationships. Yes. Yeah. It recently, is. It, recently, we have be, mm, we became direct members of FIAPCHI, which is the Worldwide Federation of Real Estate Professionals. This everything takes takes a village, and I really want to thank the rest of the European board in our team 
regional managers and everybody else because as you know we have a pyramidal structure it takes time it takes a lot of knowledge a lot of patience and a lot of uh, diplomacy <laughs> And having this group of people who are helping on an everyday basis allows me at the same time to, to focus on uh, cultivating these relationships, and putting the focus on, on what is really going to be beneficial for the whole industry. Right. I mean, you've traveled to other countries to meet people and then... Um, you know, some people go, well, what's the benefit? What, what came out of that? And it's like, you might not see the immediate impact, but you're saying a year later, it's, it's that, that continual building of the relationship. We have this short-term gratification mindset in many ways, this instant, I need it now, and it, but it takes time to build. And our mission with IHOSP, both IHOSP International and IHOSP Europe is to expand staging on a global level and, and, make an impact. So we're working at a very high level many times, whereas a lot of times our members come in and they just want, well, how do I price or I need a document or something. They're, they're more myopic in what they need from the association, not realizing that behind the scenes, you know, your leaders are working very hard to cultivate relationships, giving of their time. And, you know, and it's, um, it's a passion and a love because it's certainly, we don't do it for the money because there isn't a, you know, there's no money. <laughs> there's no money. <laughs> I mean, money comes in and it pays for certain things, but it's not, it's not, we're not at the point yet where, you know, there's tons of money coming in that could even pay salaries to these people that they deserve. And so um, we'll get there. I just really feel like we're on the cusp yeah. and stupid COVID, you know, that, that really put a damper on, on a lot of people's businesses. And so I am seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, being able to get through that. And I did want to share for those of you traveling to Portugal, I have been on, you know, looking every you know week to see what the, the um, requirements are. And as of right now, it's just a negative test 24 hours before you enter the country or a doc if you've had COVID, a doctor saying that you've recovered from it um, or the um, booster shot, they would require a current booster shot if you're going to do the vaccine route type of thing. So um, and then getting back to the United States, you do have to have the PCR test currently. I'm hoping that by May, a lot of this will have been adjusted again, that they'll have lightened up on the requirements. So, um, you know, you can, you can Google that information uh, online. You can easily see what the requirements are. So it's not like you're going to get a flight and then be turned away at the border. Uh, you'll know before you jump on that airplane, whether you're able to get in the country, basically. Yeah, exactly. And also um, the involvement of IHSPU helping those affiliate association no? mm -hmm. in working together with establishing the right parameters and the right goals for the industry within the European continent is growing because the markets is growing. And so the presence of home stagers, I think it has increased by probably a thousand percent in the last two, three years, because there's Good. so many schools offering um, home staging training. And there were some markets, which we used to call emerging markets, that didn't have no associations or no institutional presence. So as of now, we have, um, as the affiliates, the UK and Ireland, the Swiss Association, ASE, the Spanish Association, and the newly joined Portuguese Association, who will be helping us with the conference. Yeah. And um, they're very excited to, to have us there and to meet and greet. Uh, currently, another two national associations have been recently founded. One is in Poland and one in Russia. So fingers crossed, we have offered our support and we're hoping to have them as our newest affiliate soon. Which is really exciting. And um, I just wrote to the Polish um, association president and um, it, you know, hopefully they're, I believe she's coming to the conference. It'll be fun to meet. And it's, it'll be, again, those of us that have been in staging a long time, uh, you know, people watch what we do and they're following us online and they're, you know, um, when you come over, it's not like you're not a celebrity, but, but expect that people will be, I don't know. I don't know really the, how to express this, but they'll, it's, it's an honor for them to meet us and it's an honor for us to meet them. Um, but they really look to us, the United States as, you know, we, we've been doing this a long time. And so keep that in mind when you come over that you're representing not just 
yourself and your business, but you're representing our, our industry and our association as well. And, um, and just expect you're going to meet some really fabulous people and maybe learn how to say some things in different languages as well. And um, it'll be really, I, I'm excited for it. It's going to yeah. be great. Well, you know, North American people coming and traveling to Portugal are actually even very lucky because of the language. We, we've been approached by several colleagues asking if the whole um, you know, conference is going to be simultaneously translated. Unfortunately, not this time. And um, as I said, the language barrier for those who you know, have questions and concern might actually be a challenge. Like I've been invited a couple of years ago to the German conference. Although I do speak German, you know, setting the, their eight hours, not being able to fully comprehend everything, that didn't actually count the most for me. For me, the most important part was being there, supporting the colleagues, meeting and greeting them. And as I said, just get the most out of it. Or when you recently said, because I did used to travel a lot representing the association before COVID, uh, happened, of course. I went to Bulgaria, been invited by the National Real Estate Association in Bulgaria. I don't speak Bulgarian. So, I'm Bulgarian. I'm Bulgarian. I don't speak yeah, Bulgarian. No. <laughs> oh my God. And I'm Polish, and I can say a few things, but not a lot. But yeah. it is really important to be at the right places at mm -hmm. the right time. I've, I've actually had students, like I remember teaching in uh, San Francisco area once, and um, a, a Chinese national student, she spoke English, but it was kind of broken, but she brought a translator and I, I allowed that person to be in the class. So, because I oh, wanted yeah. her to hear the information. So if somebody wants to bring a person with them who can kind of help translate some of that, I'm sure that would be acceptable. They'd have to buy a ticket, but you know, I mean, that would be probably okay. As long as they weren't like whispering and <laughs> I'd be like, you can't so, hear. The corner, <laughs> at the back. <laughs> Well, and um, and then after after the conference, you know, we, there are those of us that are coming over. I mean, I've never been to Portugal. I, I don't know if we're going to toodle around Portugal. We were think, thinking of going even over to Spain. So those of you that are watching, I'd love to put like a little group tour together. Um, Verena Mumford helped us do this last time in Italy. It was so fun. And, um, you know, she took us, it was a whirlwind, but we hit like three different cities and she used to be in that industry. So she knew what to do. And um, I think, and it was, it was a highlight of our trip over there too, because it's fun to be doing that with, with colleagues in a setting that, you know, it's not about a conference and business and so forth. It's just having fun and, and yeah. um, deepening relationships. So I'm hoping if we do that, you're able to come along hopefully because i know you weren't able to last time because it was you know family obligations and everything so we'll talk but those of you that are coming over you know i'm, I'm not gonna have 100 people on this thing but it would be you know manageable number of people yeah. that we could kind of put together a um a tour afterwards for you know three four days or something so i think that would be fun yeah you'll have the opportunity to meet some of our great sponsors for the conference uh, we have cave home as the main sponsor they have some amazing, great looking furniture. And um, we'll have the lady, um, a local artist from Rome who does beautiful jewelry. Nice. Oh yeah, very excited about that. We have 221 as our main sponsor, Stage Flow as, um, as our sponsor as well. We do have educational supporters, Stage um, stage homes, man. It's a main sponsor and an educational sponsor too. Um, yeah, so great collaborations and sponsorships. We also have a couple of uh, my favorite associations who are supporters as well. Because I I believe that together we're stronger. Mm -hmm. No matter what's the relationship, is it institutional? Is it partnership? Together we're stronger. I love that saying. That's yeah. really great. So do you guys have any questions? Um, you are, we have a nice audience here. So do you have anybody? Yeah, have anybody, questions? please, because I can't read the numbers. Do we oh, have yeah. <laughs> well, so, and, and it's on, it's streaming on different pages too. So if you have any questions for Sonia, you know, go ahead and type yeah. them in if you want to say hello or whatever. Um, and let's talk about, so your business, just we'll wrap up with this. Um, you have, how is the uh, warehouse going? How is yours, the staging going? Are things opening back up? 
So um, let's say personally, as a stager, it's going greatly. Actually, fabulous. Never been this this good. Have to good. be really honest. When it comes to the furniture rental company that uh, Verena and I have founded in 2019, it's not doing pretty well because stagers do not rent a lot of our stuff for many reasons, which I won't bring. <laughs> or maybe I and that, and, that, and that will, you know, um, upping the standard and not using prop furniture because we did that back early, early, cool. early on, and it'll it'll get there. But it's basically been able to, especially when you're dealing with the luxury market. Um, you know, you can't put cardboard furniture, I mean, you can, but it doesn't look great. And so being able to up the standard, because all of that reflects on the listing agent, the seller, the final price that they're going to get and, and so forth. So um, I'm going to encourage stagers over in Europe. It's, you know, there it's, there's a time and place to start making a shift. I certainly did vignette uh, staging early on and I had things covered with fabric and, um, and it worked for a period of time, but I would never do that now. And um, the expectation of buyers because of the media that didn't exist back when I got started 20 years ago, it, it's it's very different. So I feel like you guys are gonna have this accelerated expectation. So it's not gonna take that long for people to be like, you know, it was probably about a decade or so that people were like, don't use that anymore. I think you're, you're gonna be accelerated on that. And um, we're definitely gonna, you know, help uh, support that because um, the standard, um, professional standards need to be adhered to or encouraged for the industry to grow and attract the type of people we want for the industry and to show the clients, the, the prospective clients, the impact the staging can make. So um, I'm really proud of you guys doing that. You, you know, that you did that and then COVID well, hit and yeah. that had a big impact. So, well, yeah, um, we're here to support the industry. This is why Handsome was, was born. We were very careful and we do not promote handsome as part of our businesses as much as we probably as business owners should, but because of our, you know, personal involvement within the association, um, as I said, we're here to help the problem that the European market is facing when it comes to alternative solutions, which might be cardboard or vignette and blah, blah. And, and, and you know, like we are all doing, better things and having better projects today than when we started. We've all improved and evolved. Um, what is happening here, just because staging is still not very popular, any kind of staging is still better than an unstaged property. Correct, yeah. So but they it's... don't realize which is a professional staging project and how that looks professional and good on them, not only on us. So even a poorly staged property sells. Right. <laughs> so we have to wait that everybody uses staging services, that all homes are going to be, you know, staged. And then they will immediately be able to see the difference between professionally staged and not. Right. In order to say, I want to hire this stager or work with that one because this is the expectation that I have and this is what I want to make my investment on. Well, I mean, a marketing campaign, are you cardboard or are you, what's another C word for like upholstered or real? I mean, I could come up with that, but basically comparing as a realtor or real estate agent, if I'm putting a product out there, what represents my brand better, cardboard or real you know, um, quality? Are you cardboard or quality? That's a marketing campaign. Um, and this is what we did as a marketing campaign and, and it's, and it's working for us as, as the, um, you know, real estate agency, it just works so great. It's it's just, great. We're the only one. And you know, the importance of the only one, that's yep. another, my aha moment from Fred one Leonard. of the U S conferences. Yeah. yeah Fred. What Fred. is that one thing that sets you apart from everybody else? And what, are you, like, what are you the only, I'm the only, what can you say? That's excellent. Hey, Karen, um, I will be sharing about two, two, one. Yeah. Um, after it's more formalized, but it's a, it's an exciting relationship. And so, um, and I don't want to go back on the thing. This is being recorded and I will mm -hmm. edit out the first part where nobody could hear me. And so you can, you can listen to that again, but um, it's an exciting relationship exclusive to IHOSP and a huge opportunity for stagers who specialize in that. And it will be, uh, it's uh, right now geared much more towards luxury around the globe. And so that will be one of the requirements is people having that luxury certification in order to participate in the program. So. And that's an amazing opportunity. Yep. 
Well, I can't wait to see you. So March, February, March, April, three months. What's today? The 23rd? 23rd. Three, I got my plane ticket. I, you know, last time when I flew out, so you guys be careful if you're booking your tickets. I found a ticket last time when it was $700 round trip. And I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. So I booked two flights for John and myself and, um, and then realized we don't have seats. And this is how they get you. So it wasn't like through the airline portal. It was through one of these discount airline things. And so, oh, you want to actually sit on the airplane? Okay, well, you have to pay $89 for this seat because it was like from here to Germany and Germany to somewhere else. It was so every time, every leg of the trip, we had to buy a chair coming and going. And that then added up to the regular price of the ticket, which I should have just bought from the airline directly in the first place. So that's how they get you. And I, I actually said to the people, I said, so what would have happened if I didn't buy a seat? Am I going to be sitting in the toilet on the way over? I said, no, because I'm be standing. Yeah, standing up the whole time. So really, really look at the fine print and, um, you know, and, and get the traveler's insurance because, you know, none of us can predict the future. But, um, you know, the airfare right now is from Denver. It's about 1400 ish round trip, which isn't bad. So um, and then the hotel, the Pastana Palace, you have to go to the IHOS Europe site yes. and uh, look, click on events. You find the uh, conference information and you scroll down in the hotel. There's a link from the from there to the hotel to get you the special rate on the hotel. And so otherwise, if you try to go directly with them, you won't get the special negotiated rate. I can't. That's a beautiful hotel. It's, it looks just the hotel amazing. is amazing. And the negotiated rate compared to the luxurious feeling and the comfort that you'll have within the whole Pistana's property because it's it's massive. And the conference is going to be, we'll have a designated area for the educational session. Then we do have another room for the gala dinner. And then we will have an additional room just for the DJ and music and party and dancing. These are the, this is the hotel grounds. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure what, what is the building on the right? Is that, is that, that's not the hotel or is that the hotel or the hotels in the back? No. The hotels. Hotel is the white one at the back. Right here. Okay. It's, um, it's historical, I think, 19th century building. I mean, it's it's gorgeous. Antiques. Look at this beautiful um, parlor room, you know, it's a gathering place in the hotel. I mean, I mean, just the ceiling. It's so, we don't have anything like this in the United States. And when I, we went over to Italy and just being able to see all the architecture and um, beautiful gold gilded, you know, just gorgeous. And so, and the rooms, the hotel rooms are, you know, just as beautiful. So it's a, it's a, it's a treat. It's a pleasure. It's a privilege. It's a, you know, something we don't really see here. So that That's just, really so, it. yeah. Although you it's can admire it. I think breakfast is included within, you know, the booking rate, Wi-Fi. So everything. And, and, well, and they've been, they, well, almost everything. And they've been, they've been very gracious to, cause this was supposed to happen in 2020, 2020. Yeah. So it's been two years and, and, you know, these hotels, I, I want to give kudos to them as well. They've honored the agreements, which they didn't have to do, but I'm glad that they did they because, did. um, you know, it wasn't our plan not to be able to go over in 2020. So here we are, 2022 is the year and, um, make your plans. Don't wait, you know, we're 90 days away. So that's really a, a window now that of your, to get the best rates and so forth. You've got a book now and get your ticket. How much is the conference ticket? Uh, it's 115 euros for day one. And for those um, who are willing to book for both days and get that designation, it's 350. I'm not okay. saying it out loud because I don't remember right now the correct price. Yeah, so you'll have the euro, the euro to dollar conversion, but still that's a, a excellent investment low investment for the education you're going to receive and everything. It's truly a lot of the stuff that's going to happen to me is sort of priceless. You can't put a price on it. So um, anyway, I'm, I'm hoping that we get a big turnout from the United States. I'm going to encourage a lot of the, the uh, industry leaders that are, if you're watching, um, I'll be reaching out as well, sending out emails, but, but let's show some support to our European colleagues. You guys always usually have a big contingent that comes from the United States over to our conferences um, you know, as many as 15 to 30 people, depending on the, uh, the year that we've had. And, um, you know, it's a, it is a big effort to travel and go over there and, you know, not that Nashville isn't exciting or Charlotte, but it's not Rome and it's not Portugal. It's not Lisbon. I mean, there the cities there in Europe, and I don't know if you guys take them for granted or not, but not having ever been there, just being able to go and see something so beautiful um, you know, it's, and to be able to wrap it around an event where you get to see your colleagues and friends and also learn why, why, why wouldn't everybody go? Yeah. So 
And of course, IHASP International and IHASP Europe member have a preferred pricing for the conference member price. Oh, awesome. And is that on the site as well? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, um, great. 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 Any, any last words, my dear? I love is you. Is Ektori going to be there? Sorry? Is, your, is Ektori going to be there, her husband? I don't think so. No. I want to see him. I know. I want to see him too. I know. Her, so Sonia's husband is a diplomat. He's over. He, this is when is he finally done with his. This year. Thank God. Yes. They've been apart. You know, this is really challenging. So this is even, imagine you guys that you're, she has, she, they have two daughters. One is in school in London. Where's the other one? Is she also now in college? Both of them in Scotland. College. Oh my goodness. So they're both in college, but you know, Sonia started this when they were home. And then Hector, a, he is a diplomat um, in what country? Nigeria right now. And, um, and has been stationed other places as well. And so they're apart 10 months of the year. And I, but you guys have such a great love affair. I, this is totally yeah. off topic, but you guys are so cute. I mean, I love the pictures. It is, you, you can tell he just loves her so much. And if there's any way that we can get him to the conference, whether, you know, you know, I can talk privately about that. I would, um, I'd be, I'd, you know, I'd be willing to help out with that because I just, we, we love him. He's such a good, um, good man and so supportive. Um, and you know, and I know you miss him. So I do, but, um, I like to see the glass half full and yeah. having the family away, knowing them safe and that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing is also allowing me to work 12 to 14, 16 hours per day, which if that. we were at home, I wouldn't have had the opportunity. Yes. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I get that sometimes too. Like you feel like you can get more done when you're by yourself, but the relationship, I know it's been really hard. So, um, and that, that takes a toll, but I feel like you guys, you've made it work and I'm excited that this, he's not, he's almost done. And, and then together. Yeah. It'll be, it'll thank be like, you. yeah, exactly. It'll be good. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on. Um, thank you. Always a pleasure. Good. And thanks everybody in the audience for, um, you know, being with us. Yep. We'll be back next week with another uh, great show. And until then, have a great rest of your week. And thank you, Sonia. And thank you, everybody in IHAS Europe Leadership for uh, doing what you're doing. Verena and Paloma, especially. Um, I know how hard you guys are working and we just love you and we're here to support you. And I can't wait to see you. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Ciao. Bye.